Last time I made a working laser circuit. Now we can go to the next phase and include Bluetooth support. For testing I soldered components to a prototype board so it will be easier to use. And I will be using ESP32 as a Bluetooth device, but more on that in a second. What even is the ESP32? Same as Arduino, it is a microcontroller. It has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi modules. Different CPU, higher operating frequency, more flash and SRM memory than Arduino. Arduino uses C and C++ language, ESP32 can additionally use Python. ESP's operating voltage is 3.3 volts. Arduino's is 5 volts. Finally, ESP is more versatile, but slightly harder to use. All I want to do with Arduino can be done with ESP, but I don't want to change microcontrollers in the middle of the project, so I will use ESP32 only as a Bluetooth receiver. I've considered other options, but this solution seems to be the easiest and quickest one. To implement it, I need to do three things. 1. Connect a PS4 controller to the ESP. 2. Establish communication between ESP and Arduino. And 3. Use controller inputs in the push button program that I have made already. Fortunately, ESP is very common among hobbyists, and most of the hard work is already done by someone else. We just need to download a few libraries and see how they work. Also, I put all the other things that you will need in the description as Amazon affiliate links. One of the best things about ESP32 is that it can be programmed using Arduino IDE. At the first setup, we just need to download board files, which can be done directly in the program. Then connect the microcontroller to the PC and we can upload the first code. On the side note, you may need to download some additional drivers for the board if it isn't working with your PC. To do this, just just go into device manager and see what is missing. Now download this library from GitHub, which allows us to read inputs from a PS4 controller. Link to it will be in the description. Also we need something to check and maybe change MAC address saved in controller. I used 6 access per tool. So how does all of this work? DualShock controller connects to the PS4 via Bluetooth. Each device that uses Bluetooth or Wi-Fi has a MAC address, medium access control address, used for communication between devices. When a DualShock is connected to a PlayStation, controller address is stored on a console, and a console address is stored on a controller. It tells both devices that they can connect to each other and send or receive data. The ESP32 also have a MAC address, actually many MAC addresses, each for a different mode of communication. So we need to get here ESP's MAC address and see what address PS4 controller wants to connect to. And now there are three options. Set an ESP address to be the same as a PS4 console address connected to a controller. In this case the ESP and console will share the same address, so PS4 may turn on instead of ESP. Second case is to change a master MAC address in controller to a custom one and set this address in ESP. Then DualShock will only connect to the ESP or we can see what MAC address is the ESP's Bluetooth and put it as a master into the controller. I'll be going with the last option because after this setup it reduces the amount of code that we need. First let's get ESP's MAC by using this example sketch. Push enable button on the ESP to see it in a serial monitor. Then connect the controller to a PC, use a tool to see the MAC address and change it to the ESP's address. Connect the ESP back to a PC and now we can install the PS4 library and open a PS4 input program. Also if you first connected a controller to an ESP and then change controller MAC address, it won't work. The ESP saves MAC addresses, so we need to remove it if we want to add a new one. After a long search I found this program on Reddit. I've put a link to this thread in the description. Now we launch the program, turn on the controller and it should display some data in the serial monitor. The first task is now completed and I'll go over the code later in this video. It's time to connect two microcontrollers together. The best way would be to establish a serial communication between them. We need to connect RX and TX pins between two microcontrollers, crossing a receiving pin to a transmitting pin. Also connect both microcontrollers to a common ground, but connecting them directly is a big no-no. 
Arduino operates at 5V and ESP32 at 3.3V. Higher voltage signal from Arduino may damage the ESP. That's why I'm going to include logic level shifter between two microcontrollers. We can either use a pre-made one, use IC logic level shifter or make our own using two MOSFETs and a few 10K ohm resistors. I will make it from the scratch since I have suitable MOSFETs at hand. The basic premise is simple. Connect the lower voltage input to the source, higher input to the drain. Then connect power line to corresponding signal lines with pull-up resistors. And finally, the gate is connected to the lower voltage power line. So, when we get 3.3 volts from the lower side, VGS is too low to open the gate and the 5 volt side is pulled up to 5 volts. When we get 0 volts on the low side, the gate opens and 0 volts also appear on the high side. If 5 volts appear on the high side, low side can be only pulled to the 3.3 volts because at this point MOSFET closes. And if we get 0 volts on the high side, it drags the low side low via bulk diode. Then VGS GS is high enough to open the MOSFET. That is basically it. I talked more about this type of MOSFETs in the previous part of this series. I've made this circuit on a breadboard and connected both microcontrollers together. Now let's see how does a basic code for a serial communication work. On the left is CSP, on the right Arduino. With ESP32 we can use different communication ports than default ones. In this case pin 16 and 17. Serial begin is for ESP, serial 2 begin will be for communication. Serial 2 print LN sends the message as a string with an end marker for a new line. So the text will be sent to Arduino through serial 2 pins. Serial print LN is there just to see what we are sending. On the Arduino side, serial begin with the same communication rate as serial 2 in the ESP. Use serial read to receive data, so we can print it in a serial monitor. This is basic communication. Sending a string of characters, it is very slow, and string variables are far from optimal when sending or receiving data. Now let's take a look at PS4 receive data example. All inputs from the controller are here, but for now I'm going to use only the X button. So I plugged it into a serial communication and if the X button is pressed, it will send one to the Arduino. This one is not a one as in 5 volts, but a text saying one. In the future when more inputs are needed, I will have to send it in a different form, but for now it is enough. So I modified my push button program to receive this data. First, it sets button state to zero. If a serial data is coming in, the program reads a string using read string until command. In this case, it detects when the new line begins and stops receiving data. It is a bit faster than serial read. But still, there is a one second delay between pushing a button and the laser turning on. When everything goes through, button state is equal to one. The rest of the code doesn't change. This code allows turning the laser diode on and off, but there are some caveats to it. When data is sent, I can't send more data until it is fully received. So when the RX LED on Arduino flashes once, only then I can send the next command. It also causes a delay between button press and laser start. From what I gathered, it is most likely caused by using strings in a serial communication. For now it does the job, but later, when I integrate servos, it it would be too slow. I could spend more time working on it to eliminate this problem, but I don't know if it even works when I add more controller inputs to be sent over. That's why I'm going to leave it as it is for now. This concludes phase 3 of the laser turret project. And now we can get to... Phase 4 I've managed to connect the PS4 controller to the ESP32 and then send data to Arduino. It does what I wanted it to do but not well enough. For now, I'll focus on servo motors. I need to see how they work with Arduino and how to efficiently control them. When this is done, I will revisit the topic of serial communication. There will be more data to send over and process, so my code may be entirely different from the current one. Writing a code seems to be the most difficult part, even though most of what I need is already written and can be found on the internet. I still have a lot to learn and I would appreciate your help.
So if you have any tips, share them in comments. Consider subscribing, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. As always I put all the stuff in the description, as affiliate links. See you in the next one. I'm